Yeah, thanks uh, Gautam for inviting and uh, it's great to be here and nice to see that there are so many people for this talk. I thought uh, this talk would be one of those fringe talks which only three, four people would be interested but great to see the room is getting full. So what I'm going to talk about is uh, look at largely efficiency issues when one is dealing with large scale graphs and uh, for me, the graphs are typically not necessarily the social network style graphs, but largely from the linked data community. So we will see what this linked data graphs, how they are different from social network graphs and how big are these and what are the some problems that you see while you are trying to deal with these graphs and uh, how we can go about solving it. And much of the work that may come later in the talk is clearly not just me alone who has worked on it. I just haven't listed all my collaborators, but uh, we can uh, talk about it. I can send you the papers if required. So first, I don't need to give an introduction about what a graph is, right? Everybody knows a, what a graph structure looks like. It's one of the most general way of representing information, right? One of the most flexible uh, forms, but let's focus on what is a graph database. As compared to, you can look at actually any relational database as a graph database, in some sense. So you have foreign keys which link one record to another, so no issues. So you can actually form a graph structure using these foreign key relationships, and within a tuple between two uh, values in the tuple you can actually form a relationship because they are actually related. That's why they are called relational structures. So how is it different from a graph database which is getting more popular nowadays? The key difference is in the way the data gets accessed, right? In relational databases, the focus is always on indexed access to some tuple. So you know this, this group of values are a relation. So I just want to access this entire group and then process it. On the other hand, in graph databases, the focus is more on, I am currently on this particular value, tell me all the values that are related to it. It need not be through a single tuple relationship, it could be normalized, denormalized, across foreign keys. I really have no control on what kind of relationship I am looking for, but I could traverse this relationships from a given node. So this is the key difference. And this, if you again put it back in the relational world, it can be seen as a huge number of joins that you need to perform, right? Which is not a uh, fun task to do on relational databases. So you want to avoid these joins. On the other hand, this is the only mode of traversal access that you are allowed to do on graph databases. Although we will relax it a little later and say that we want to do both relational style as well as navigational style of access. But this is the main difference between standard databases and graph databases. So some of the examples of what kind of questions you could get on graph databases, find all friends of Gautam. So you know a node Gautam and you want to find all relationships, find out only those relationships which say it's friendship and locate the other end of. So this is one hop BFS with certain kind of restriction right from the graph world. You can actually look at little more complicated issues. So I there is another node called Srikantha and I want to find out all the connections that not an individual single hop connections but anyone who can be reached from Srikantha. So I want to contact him and probably send out resume to him and say hey please propagate it in your network. So you should know how valuable that person is in terms of how many people he can reach out to, right? So look at Srikanta and look at all the reachable nodes from there, right? These are some of the queries which you don't often find on relational databases, but these are extremely common when we are dealing with graph databases. So essentially they are recursive joints. They are recursive joints. Including cells, <coughs> joints, cells, yeah. everything. Right? So recursive join is one way of looking at if you have self join, but it could be simply join stream of joins. Okay? So it could be on the same table or across tables. You really don't have a 
requirement to stop that. So it is not again something very new, uh, in fact I have not put the dates but you can easily guess logic databases was well before I think probably 80 percent of this uh, room was even born, right. People have been working on it and if you have met uh, Alman or whoever visited TCS, you can easily see that data these log. guys, yeah, they worked on data log and even before that there was prolog which was from AI side and these things were 30 years long uh, history, right. So that is where the real grounds of graph databases were sown, right. And then of course the, once the web came, it is very natural to see the web as a big graph and uh, you are all familiar with page rank and Google's mode of uh, trying to rank pages which is largely a graph query, right, as we will see soon. And then XML wave hit database uh, community and XML is both a tree and if you relax it a little graph, right. So again huge amount of work was uh, came out during XML uh, activity, right, I mean XML database research. So whenever you look at <coughs> many graph papers from about 10, 20 years, 10, 10 to 15 years old, then you will see they all refer back to XML, XQuery, XPath kind of settings. So although they are not strictly graphs, graph database research flourished during that time. But now there is even bigger beast called linked data, okay, which is what I am really excited about, which I am going to talk about uh, in this talk. There the linked data graphs are really graphs as in XML was mostly tree structured with some uh, deviations from the tree, but linked data is mostly graph structures with very little deviating from the graph structure as in moving into the tree, very little. But so we are really seeing true graph requirements in databases now. So just to give a, a brief introduction of what these graphs would look like in linked data setting, right. So I just uh, was thinking about which are the good examples to give and then I happened to catch the DVD of Expendables, so I thought I will talk about the good old. Bruce Willis and Dolph Lundgren who are heroes in this movie, right. So you can form such a graph where Bruce Willis is one node and Dolph Lundgren and you can have relationships like he both were born in different cities, Idar Oberstein and uh, Stockholm and then both of them have worked in one single movie, The Expendables and it is a movie and you can even construct further relationships like this is a movie made in Hollywood and it is an action movie and these kind of things and both of them are action heroes out of which Dolph knows martial arts while Bruce Willis knows how to handle a gun, right. Uh, so this is a big, uh, this is a small snapshot of a fairly large graph that you can construct just from IMDB data set, just from movies that are out there, yeah. Yes. Yes. In fact, Google Knowledge Graph is another RDF linked data graph that you can see. And uh, in fact, they have used not just a Wikipedia, they have used uh, IMDB as well. They have used many of these almost structured uh, sources in order to extract. So I'm not going to talk about much on how exactly they built the graph, but this is exactly what you are saying. This is the way Google Knowledge Graph also looks like. But the problem with Google Knowledge Graph is they relate each node with some static nodes. They cannot uh, operate on dynamically changing events. So if the query is dynamically <coughs> changing events or some time series kind of data sets related, yeah. then they clearly means. Uh, they have a problem uh, using the knowledge graph directly. You are perfectly right. In fact, this is actually an active research area. I am not going to talk much about it, but we can discuss this offline. In fact, this is also one of my research areas uh, coincidentally. So looking at how these event kind of uh, 
data stream that is coming in, how you can represent them as graphs, how you can query them and it clearly the problems only compound from what I am talking about here, right. So they are much harder problems. Google is still catching up with us on that front. Just one. Yeah. Predicate in one sentence can be either a subject or object. Mm -hmm. And syntax makes this structure more complicated than conventional graphs. So, are you going to stack up on? <coughs> so, give it such a graph that you have constructed from known facts, right? So, you can actually look at the graph as simply a bag of edges. So, you can allow for multiple edges between nodes, right? This with the same label also. It is perfectly okay, RDF does not prevent it. So, and every edge is represented as a triple which essentially says what is the source of the edge, what is the target of the edge and what is the label on the edge and edges are always direct in RDF setting. And again in the semantic web uh, definition when you look at it, so RDF graphs Every node on edge has a unique identifier in the form of URI, but it is only a minor detail which is not really important for looking at RDF data as a graph, right. It just gives you some way of identifying the nodes and edges.